Adobe makes the most popular apps for photographers, Lightroom, Lightroom Classic, and Photoshop. But it's very confusing the differences between them. And you probably picked the wrong version of Lightroom. So I'm going to explain which ones you should get, save you some frustration, and probably save you a lot of money. First of all, if you want any of these apps, we have an affiliate link. You can go to scp.io slash Adobe Deal and sign up. First, let's talk about the difference between Lightroom and Lightroom Classic. This is really, really confusing. We have to go through the history of how Adobe named these two separate products to really understand it. In 2007, Adobe launched Lightroom. It was their photo organizing and light editing app. It stayed Lightroom until 2015 when Adobe launched the Creative Cloud, which is their up in the cloud service where you get like free unlimited updates and you pay per month instead of like paying in one large sum. At that same time, they launched a separate app called Lightroom Mobile. This was a smartphone app, which was supposed to be a companion for Lightroom. And if you use Lightroom Mobile, it would send your pictures up into the Creative Cloud and you can get them on your Lightroom CC desktop. And everything was merry for a couple of years. In 2017, Adobe did something that made me so mad that I'm still really mad about it. They renamed Lightroom CC Lightroom Classic CC, this app that we've been using since 2007 for a decade and just constantly calling Lightroom now had a different name, Lightroom Classic CC. Here's where it gets confusing. They renamed Lightroom Mobile Lightroom CC, the exact name of a completely different app. The only way this makes any sense is if you think about Coke and New Coke, and you got to be like 40 years old or so to even understand this, but at some point Coca-Cola took this drink that everybody knew as Coke and made it taste bad. And then they released Coke Classic, which was the drink that you had been drinking this whole time. I'm Don Keogh, president of the Coca-Cola company. When we brought you the new taste of Coke, we knew that millions would prefer it. What we didn't know was how many thousands of you would phone and write asking us to bring back the classic taste of original Coca-Cola. They're both yours, the new taste of Coke and Coca-Cola Classic. Your right of choice is back. That's exactly what Adobe did. They even used the classic name. So the old familiar one that you liked was now Lightroom Classic. Lightroom CC was this new app that didn't have anywhere near as many features and that I literally have recommended to zero people. Adobe did the old switcheroo with the names. And I think it's because they get to charge you for storage when you use the new Lightroom. Whereas Lightroom Classic, they don't get to charge you for every picture that you take. We'll talk about that difference in a little bit. Then in 2019, Adobe dropped the CC from each of the names. Lightroom Classic has a lot of features that Lightroom completely lacks. Some of these are really key. One is side-by-side -side comparisons. If I take wildlife pictures, I might take a hundred pictures of a bird perched in a tree. I will then go through those pictures and pick out the absolute sharpest one. And I do that by using side-by-side -side comparisons. Lightroom does not have side-by-side -side comparisons. It's actually kind of difficult to figure out which of two pictures is sharper, especially if you need to sort through a hundred of them. Lightroom Classic can print pictures. Lightroom cannot print pictures. You'd have to open it up in Photoshop in order to be able to print it. In Lightroom Classic, you can open up the map view. This way, if you remember, oh, I want to pull up my pictures from Paris, you can just go there on the map. Lightroom does not have mapping features. Lightroom also does not have tethering. That is a feature exclusive to Lightroom Classic. That means you want to connect your camera directly to your computer so that you can shoot, say, in a studio and preview pictures in real time. I find that so useful so we can zoom in and make sure everything's sharp and apply presets and stuff before we actually leave the studio. You have to use Lightroom Classic for that. You can't do that with Lightroom. With that said, the modern version of Lightroom does have some key advantages. There's a mobile app called Lightroom that has a very similar interface to the desktop Lightroom. It has a completely different interface from Lightroom Classic. So if you like the idea of being able to pick up your phone and have a familiar user interface, the modern version of Lightroom makes more sense. That Lightroom app, I'll talk about it in a bit, it will transfer pictures to both Lightroom and Lightroom Classic. So you can have that nice handoff. It's just that the user interface is different between Lightroom Mobile on the phone and Lightroom Classic. Here's the biggest difference. If you use Lightroom, 
you have to store all your pictures in the cloud. You can store them locally, but you have to put them in Adobe's creative cloud service and that you have to pay for kind of indefinitely. Like you can cancel the service and download all your pictures. You can do that, but you do not have the option to store the pictures locally exclusively. Here's how much that cloud storage costs you. The basic plan is 10 bucks a month. That's not too bad for the apps. I don't mind paying a monthly fee for apps. It's just the ongoing cost of storage start to get out of control. The basic $10 a month plan only comes with 20 gigabytes of storage. That would be small if it were just a single SD card. That's not going to last you long at all. It's really just enough to try it out. Once you want one terabyte of storage, that's going to cost you $21 a month. My current Lightroom catalog is about 25 terabytes because I've been doing this for a long time. I'm, right? Adobe does not even offer a Creative Cloud plan for me because they don't go over 20 terabytes. So it's not even an option for me. But if I had just say 20 terabytes, then I could pay $204 a month or a little less than $2,500 a year. That buys you a lot of storage. Like that is a major expense. That would get you like a new Sony A7R4 every single year and you're paying just to store your pictures. The 10 terabyte tier is, is about a hundred bucks a month. You pay roughly about 10 bucks per terabyte for storage. Okay, that seems ridiculous, except you actually probably do need to pay for some kind of cloud storage. If you have all your pictures stored on just one hard drive, that hard drive is going to fail at some point and you're going to lose all of your pictures and it's going to be absolutely crushing. This happened to a close friend of mine recently and he was pretty devastated by it. Okay, so you're smart, right? You have a separate USB drive attached and you have it automatically back up every day. That's good, but it's still not good enough because somebody could break into your house and steal all your computers and then that's gone too. There could be a fire or flooding or natural disaster. All those things destroy both your primary and your backup copy. Therefore, you're still out of luck. There's also something called bit rot, where data on hard drives, flash or magnetic drives does break down over time. And I have had thousands of old pictures become corrupted over time because the hard drive, just little bits flip from zero to one or vice versa. And there's no alarm that goes off. And if you run a backup, you're backing up the corrupted data and Old pictures will inevitably be destroyed by bit rot unless you have a sophisticated storage system. I personally have a Synology NAS, I have BTRFS, but you probably don't have that and you're probably not an IT guy. And thus you're going to want something that's simpler to use and that is cloud storage. There's a ton of cloud storage services out there. Amazon Glacier is a good inexpensive one. There, you know, people use Google Drive or Dropbox, Backblaze, so you might want to check that out. Those are less expensive options that allow you to get a cloud backup. But make no mistake, you need to be paying for some sort of cloud backup service. And if you are a photographer, the Creative Cloud plan is not a bad deal, assuming you're not me taking like hundreds of thousands of 50 megapixel raw files. If you're a regular casual photographer, it could actually work out well for you. And I think it's really convenient that it is built into the app. So I'm not opposed to it. It's worth it for a lot of people. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about the Lightroom mobile app, which runs on your smartphone, iOS or Android. And it's actually really good. And even though I'm mostly a Lightroom Classic user, I still use this on the go. When Chelsea and I travel, like on a little weekend trip, I don't take my laptop. I just take my smartphone and I'll open up Lightroom on it and I'll import my pictures, usually from a memory card reader, right into it. That backs up my pictures. And then Lightroom takes it and backs it up to the cloud. That way, if I'm robbed on the way home and they take my phone and everything, I have not lost my pictures because they're safely backed up. It also means that I can quickly edit the raw files on my phone and immediately share them on social media. Because I'm a Lightroom Classic user, those pictures are automatically imported into Lightroom Classic. Lightroom or Lightroom Classic. Either way, they all go to the Creative Cloud and it'll be shared on all your devices. Another benefit of the Lightroom app, which you should check out, is it will import your pictures that you take on your smartphone in the regular camera app and then upload this into the Lightroom Creative Cloud. So if you're a Lightroom subscriber, that means that the pictures you take on your phone will end up in your Lightroom catalog, which is really convenient for things like finding pictures of your grandmother, right? The Lightroom app also includes a pretty powerful camera app with complete manual controls and a 
strong ability to just control the raw file that you actually get out of your camera. Now let's talk about how Lightroom and Lightroom Classic compare to Photoshop, kind of the granddad of all photo editing apps. Lightroom and Lightroom Classic are primarily for organizing your thousands and thousands of photos. Photoshop does not do that. With Photoshop, you work on like one picture at a time and then you close it, but you can't like search through to find pictures that you took in Paris or to find all the pictures of your niece Maya. Those are Lightroom or Lightroom classic tasks. I do most of my editing in Lightroom. And then when I get to a point where I'm like, oh, I really need to do something serious here, like stack multiple different images together, that goes into Photoshop because Photoshop supports layers. The latest versions of Lightroom and Lightroom Classic have a very powerful masks ability that allows you to do selective editing on an image. So you can select the subject and change the brightness of it, or you can select the sky and change the brightness of it. That's all cool. That's stuff you used to have to do in Photoshop. But if say you want to combine two separate images, well now you're jumping into Photoshop. Lightroom and Lightroom Classic support presets like Instagram effects. Photoshop has something similar, they're called filters, but filters are actually way more powerful and they're not used the same as presets. Photoshop also has actions, so you can create these moderately complex scripts where Photoshop does a series of actions on a bunch of pictures and it's really useful for you know, wedding photographers who want to apply a certain effect to a thousand different pictures, but it's something that's more complex like layering a texture over an image, something that Lightroom cannot do. If you're a graphic designer, then Photoshop is perfect because you can make things 3D and render objects and add text and arrows and things like that, stuff you can't do in Lightroom. So if you see one of our thumbnails, well, it was probably a still picture that we edited first in Lightroom to get the contrast right, and then I pulled it into Photoshop to maybe add some text on a separate layer to it and do the final manipulation. Casual photographers can be happy with either Lightroom or Lightroom Classic. More serious photographers should definitely be using Lightroom Classic since the cloud storage and the limited capabilities are going to end up frustrating you. And if you're a serious photographer, for those images you might be sharing with clients or things you're putting into portfolio, you're probably going to end up pulling those into Photoshop to really do the finishing touches. We have books on Lightroom, Lightroom Classic, and Photoshop. They all come with a ton of sample files and training videos. So it's worth it just to watch the video training because it's all high quality, no ads, not this like YouTube thing where you bounce around just hoping YouTube suggests the one thing that you need to learn. No, they're structured training courses so you can sit down for a few hours and master these apps instead of just learning by whatever YouTube decides to suggest to you. Check it out at northrop.photo and I'm going to give you a special coupon code. It is LR2020. That'll get you 20% off, but probably for a limited time. So jump on it now. You can also get bundles with these books and video training all together. And if you don't yet have these apps, but you want to check them out, head to sdp.io slash Adobe deal. That's just our affiliate link. And obviously you've been watching this, so you know I don't pull any punches. Like I'll tell you the stuff that's good and bad. I have tested out all the apps on one, capture one, DXO this. I still prefer Lightroom Classic over everything else, and I think you will too. So thanks so much. If you have follow-up questions or you want to contribute something to the discussion, add a comment down below. And of course, for photography tutorials, post-processing tutorials, camera reviews, and breaking news, subscribe and click that notification bell. Bye.